So in this video, we're going to be doing a little cross project on the scroll saw. It is a two-layer cross with a light-colored uh, backer and a uh, darker colored front. I think the back is maple, the front is going to be walnut. And uh, it's a fun little project, it just has a clear finish on it. So I hope that you enjoy it and I hope maybe this will uh, get you excited about being out in the shop and help you get out there and make some sawdust. All right, so this cross I'm making is a two-layer cross. The top layer is going to be walnut, and I've already uh, glued these and, and sanded them, and they're ready to get ready to cut. Um, but I still need the, the backer piece is going to be, um, I think it's ash. I can't really remember, uh, but it's this lighter color wood. So we're going to do, a, we're going to glue these panels up. And so... Uh, I've got my bar clamps ready, and as you're probably aware, uh, one of the issues with bar clamps, particularly with the black cast iron, is wherever there's a glue joint that is touching it as it's drying, uh, you'll get these black marks. Uh, but a little bit of uh, painter's tape on there will, will take care of that. The other thing I learned, I learned this the hard way, is even on these um, F-style clamps, uh, which I'm going to put in the middle of it, you need to uh, put tape on that as well because it will also leave a mark. Uh, I was didn't know that and I found that out on my last panel glue up. So we'll get these in the clamps and then uh, we can start working on cutting, uh, getting the uh, walnut ready to cut. We're going to do stack cutting so that it goes quicker and uh, they're thin enough that that will work just fine and uh, we can do that while these are, are gluing up. I put these little spring clamps on the ends. It helps keep them flush. Doesn't, it's not perfect, but I don't have any clamp calls yet, and, um, but these kind of help keep it ready. And as I'm putting pressure on it, I'll uh, try to also be sure that they are lined up well and uh, that will typically help later on as well. All right, let's, we're going to set these over here on the floor, let them dry, and uh, then we can do the other pan. So as those backer panels that we recently glued up are drying, uh, we can get started on cutting uh, for uh, this cross. So we're going to do this, I'm going to do this uh, as stack cutting where we, uh, again, we, we're going to tape these two panels together and then put the one pattern on so I can make one cut and, and end up with two different crosses. So I just got to be sure that the uh, part that I want, the side that I wanted to use on top is facing on top if that makes any sense okay and so uh, we'll use blue painters tape and what I'm going to do is use blue painters tape and we'll go around each of the sides taping it together and then we will apply blue painters tape blue painters tape onto the surface of the uh, board and then we can put our pattern on that. So now that the board is covered with blue painter's tape and I have the pattern attached, we're going to go to the scroll saw where we're going to begin cutting out the pattern. We'll start with doing the inside cuts of both the owl and the cross before we move to doing the outside of the cross and freeing it from the board.
You'll notice that as I start to cut the outside of the cross, we don't cut from the edge, but rather I have a starter hole. Particularly doing stack cutting, you want to maintain the integrity of the board so that the piece doesn't um, vibrate too much or come loose uh, as you're finishing this cut. We just got to clean them up a little bit uh, on the, the fuzzies and do just a little bit of sanding on them carefully. And then when the uh, backer panels are dry, we'll put them on it and we'll trace around it uh, with a washer to get the offset. And then we can cut those out and we'll be just about done. Right, now that these panels are glued up, we're going to do a little bit of sanding on them and then we're going to trace the cross onto it uh, so we can cut out the back of board. All right, we are going to stack cut the back of board. So the first thing we need to do is tape these boards together. Then we can trace the pattern onto it. Right, so the next thing we need to do is cut the backer board. Now, I'm going to do it uh, in a way that I'm not sure that he's the one that came up with it, but I, I saw this first by um, uh, the artisan pirate uh, who does a whole lot of scroll saw uh, work. I encourage you to check out his channel if you haven't already. And what it involves is just taking a, a, a washer, I guess this is like a quarter inch washer, and then you just trace around it and uh, it gives you that offset that you want all the way around so see if i can do this without messing anything up all right not too bad i think that will work so now we can take this over to the scroll saw. First we'll drill a couple of holes in there so we don't lose the integrity of the piece of wood as we're cutting it out, but then we can uh, take it to the scroll saw and get this thing cut. Okay, so we're ready to, to glue these up. I think uh, the backer boards and all that cut out well. I think these are going to fit pretty nicely. Um, so anyway, uh, using, uh, again, once again, I really like to use this when I'm gluing up uh, two, two pieces like this, uh, you know, a front and a back. Uh, this is a pretty quick drying glue, which can also be an issue when you're dealing with such a small thing because you're trying to uh, get the glue onto these uh you know it's, it's pretty thin piece but all the way around before it dries and all that so anyway let's uh see if we can't get this glued up Once I get the glue on it and I attach the top board to the bottom, I cover it to protect it with a thin piece of plywood or something. And then I use bricks to apply weight evenly across the whole thing to let it dry. All right, we're going to see how this glue up did on these crosses. And hopefully we can then move on to uh, applying some finish. Yeah, I think these came out nice. So let's... Uh, Let's get some newspaper and we'll get ready to spray some finish on these crosses and wrap up this little project. 
once I applied a couple of coats of that clear finish, we're ready to attach the sawtooth hangers on the back. These are really light crosses, so I'm just going to attach these hangers using some super glue. I think these crosses came out uh, very nice. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I look forward to seeing you next time at the Parsons Bench.